Hi, Dr. Aaron Bates, your Ventura County Spine Authority. And today in this video, we're gonna actually show you how to lose weight fast. You might have heard that abs are made in the kitchen. It is true that about 20% of your weight loss involvement will happen in, in the gym or exercising, but a full 80% of the potential does happen in the kitchen. Now, I know I just lost some of you. Some of you freaked out and said, oh my gosh, I don't wanna do another weight loss gimmick, something that I'm gonna give up after a couple weeks or a couple months, get me temporary results, and then just go right back to where I was. No, this principle that I'm gonna show you today is single-handedly the most important thing you need to know for weight loss and good health and nutrition. The first question you have to ask yourself is, are you a fat burner or are you a sugar burner? The more sugar you burn, the more likely you are to have major problems. There are three reasons why you want to be a fat burner. Those of us who consume a lot of sugar or carbohydrates are more likely to burn sugar. In fact, it's impossible to burn fat as readily because your body is more predisposed enzymatically in digestive pathways to burn sugar. Number one, energy levels. People who eat a lot of carbohydrates have a lot of highs and lows in their energy levels. It's a lot like burning newspaper when trying to start a fire. It might get the fire started, but it does not last very long. So if all you have is newspaper, you're constantly throwing newspaper in the fire, as opposed to fat. If you're a fat burner, when you burn fat, you burn it a lot slower, and you don't have, which means you don't have to eat as frequently. Number two, clean fuel. Now, the truth is carbohydrates actually burn a lot dirtier than fat burns. It's, it's a, a fat is a much cleaner burning fuel. So it's not so much like newspaper and firewood. It, um, your, your fat burns actually more like natural gas. So it's a lot easier on the body, creates a lot less side effects, and actually um, the body runs a lot more efficiently because of it. And number three is that carbohydrates spike your insulin levels. And this is really relevant, not just for degenerative diseases, but also aging. Insulin is a, is a major hormone that actually promotes the aging process. So if you don't want to age fast, then stay away from carbs. Now this graph is gonna show us the most important number you need to know in your daily consumption of food, which is your grams of carbs in a day. And on the bottom of the graph, you're gonna see it says ability to burn fat. At the top of the spectrum, we have, to have up to 300 grams of carbs in a day, which are astronomical. At the bottom, we have down to zero, and uh, we have three different categories. When you're, when you're anywhere between 150 to 300 carbohydrates in a day of consumption, what this actually predisposes you for, we call this the danger zone because it predisposes you for all different types of degenerative diseases, uh, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, obesity, but some of the day-to-day -day things that people suffer with um, that can really affect your quality of life, like um, anxiety, energy levels, and insomnia. On the other end of the graph, we have from 50 carbohydrates a day and below. We call this the ketogenic phase. In this phase, we have the highest probability of your ability to burn fat, which means your body is going to shed weight incredibly fast. Just above that, we have the weight loss zone, a lot of people like to stay in this zone because it's easier, things happen a little slower, but between 50 and 100 carbohydrates a day, you are still going to lose weight based on your genetic ability and your lifestyle. Again, the, based on your genetic ability and lifestyle will dictate these numbers a little bit more specifically, but between 100 and 150 grams of carbohydrates a day, we stay in the maintenance zone. And we call this the maintenance zone, not because you're sustaining the same weight, but because you're sustaining what we call a healthy weight or the weight that is right for you. If you're the kind of person that looks, you know, like a supermodel in the maintenance phase, then that's something that's healthy for you. If you're, if you don't look like a supermodel, but you're in the maintenance phase, well, that's just right for you. And that's where health lies. So we saw the different regions of where you might lie in your carbohydrate consumption. Ketogenic being 50 grams or below will get you the fastest and even safest weight loss possible and, and uh, disease prevention uh, region to be in. Um, but to perspective as to what you might be eating, um, just a slice of pizza and six inches in diameter will actually have 72 carbohydrates in them uh, in pretty much zero fiber. Uh, a potato has 62 grams of uh, carbohydrates and only uh, four to six of those will actually be fiber. Um, an apple 
has 22 grams of, of carbohydrates. So we're not just talking sugar um, and, and bad carbohydrates, like refined carbohydrates coming from pizza, but even carbohydrates coming from a fruit still counts as part of your carbohydrates. Um, and even though they, they come with good things like fiber, if we're trying to lose weight and prevent degenerative disease and not age so fast, we have to minimize the amount of carbohydrates we consume, even when it comes to our fruits. Quiz for you. We're gonna compare three different meals. I want you to guess which one ranks highest on the carbohydrate scale, and I think this might surprise you. The first one, we're gonna compare a cup of brown rice and split pea soup. Your second meal is gonna be a, um, a handful of Skittles and a root beer float. And the third one is going to be um, a small bowl of Cheerios and skim milk with some sliced bananas and a glass of orange juice. Which one do you think has the highest carbohydrate count? If you thought the Skittles and the root beer float ranked the highest, guess again. The actual highest on the carbohydrate scale was your Cheerios and orange juice. Just knowing this principle of carbohydrate consumption is huge when it comes to weight loss and overall long-term health. But there's a lot of mistakes that people make, especially when trying to do like a ketogenic diet and huge misconceptions. One of them being ketogenic means that you just eat a lot of meat. Heck, there's no carbohydrates in, in, uh, in meat. We'll just eat a bunch of meat. But just as dangerous as too high of carbohydrates are too high of protein. And the reason why is the body is, or protein is actually very damaging to the body as well in excess consumption. Uh, some of that excess will be excreted from your body, um, but it, it is very difficult on the kidneys. The rest of the protein will actually be transferred through a process called gluconeogenesis back into sugar. So believe it or not, excess sugar and excess protein are what make you fat, not fat. The mistake in trying to reduce carbohydrate consumption is actually not consuming enough fat. And people freak out about fat. They're afraid of fat. And the truth is fat is an excellent source of fuel provided that you're consuming healthy fats. One little tip that you, or an action step that you can take away from this is go online, get an app on your phone called chronometer.com. It's an excellent app to actually measure out what you're truly consuming. And I think it might surprise you and you might see why you haven't been able to shed those extra pounds and get that six pack. Now, if this video just raised more questions than actually fulfilled answers, then please comment below. Um, let me know on some, uh, some of the questions that you might have that confuse you, or even some questions that spawned just by going over this simple principle, because nutrition is very complicated, very situational, and also um, there's a lot of variables. So please, comments below are welcome.